I, I'll peel back the curtain just a little bit. And Miles, you know about this because I've sent out the text on the PFT chain. Somebody texted me a couple of hours ago. And, and I, look, we didn't report this. I haven't tweeted it. I haven't breathed the word of it anywhere. I'm just giving you guys an idea of how the sausage is made. Somebody told me Odell Beckham Jr. is going to the Chiefs. Well, I'm not reporting that until I know it can be confirmed. So I, and, and I accepted the possibility that while I'm trying to confirm it, someone else will report it. But two hours later, I don't see Odell Beckham Jr. reportedly going to the Chiefs. So it was either premature or inaccurate, or it's this big mystery that they're somehow keeping close to the vest for now that is impossible to be confirmed and no one has reported. But that's something that I'm going to be keeping a close eye on over the course of the next hour, whether or not the news hits that Odo Beckham Jr. has indeed chosen the Kansas City Chiefs. And, you know, that would be a little bit of a surprise because the momentum has been pointing toward the Saints, Miles, and I think it comes down to what role does Odell Beckham Jr. want with his new team. And it's a sliding scale. New Orleans, number one receiver. Unquestioned. Slip right into the Michael Thomas number 13 and off you go. Kansas City, you're not the number one guy, but you got a better quarterback. So that's where he has to make that value judgment where he wants to be, and only he knows how to balance the various factors and make a decision as to which team he wants to play for. Yeah, I, I mean, I, frankly, if, it, if it's me, I think that I would want to be with Kansas City because I think that they have a better shot at at least making the playoffs right now based on the way things are going. I mean, I, I don't I think New Orleans defense is really good, but I don't know that I trust Trevor Simeon or Taysom Hill, whichever quarterback Sean Payton decides to go with. Um, more than I would trust Patrick Mahomes. But, you know, I, I think it's like you said, he has to weigh whether or not he wants to be that number one wide receiver and get all of the targets and it'll be the guy where he was not um, with my Cleveland Browns, as you like to say, or, you know, do you want to go to Kansas City and have a better shot at, at winning a championship? Or do you want to go to a place like Green Bay where they have a better record and, you know, you're going to be playing second fiddle to Devontae Adams, but that probably is the best team situation or still you know at least it seemed like at first the Seahawks were going to be a very viable option do you want to go there and really help try to chase things where you'd still not be the primary option there probably because they would probably rotate the way the targets go around between him and also uh, DK Metcalf and Tyler Lockett so there, there's just a lot of different factors and there's a lot of different pros and cons probably that Beckham has to weigh for this decision. And one very big factor here, and just so we're clear on how the money works, he agreed to waive $3 million of the termination pay he would have been entitled to receive from the Cleveland Browns. Guarantees and offsets don't come into play here. Termination pay is money that you get and you get to keep. If you're a vested veteran and you are released after week one, if you're on the roster at week one and you're released after that, you get the full amount of your remaining salary as termination pay unreduced by anything you make anywhere else. However, the Browns and Odo Beckham Jr. provided a roadmap that a lot of other teams weren't aware of. As I understand it, this ability to reduce or flat-out forfeit your termination pay was added to the 2020 CBA. It was not in the 2011 CBA. I've seen some claims on Twitter that it's happened in the past. Teams were under the impression generally, not every team, I didn't poll every team, but the people that I know were under the impression that you can't waive termination pay. Well, you can now. And the Browns and Beckham agreed that $3 million of the potential termination pay is gone. So he needs $3 million to break even with where he would have been under his Cleveland contract. But it's not just what are you going to make the rest of this year, Miles. It's what are you setting yourself up to make next year. So if there's a team like the Seahawks offering you $3 million, okay, great. I make all my money, but I'm going to be second fiddle, third fiddle, who knows what in Seattle. And they like to run the ball. And am I really going to see the ball? Am I going to get to do the things that will set me up for a big contract next year? If I go to New Orleans, Sean Payton's going to design the offense all around me. I'm going to be the guy. Sean Payton's going to brainstorm all these plays, how to get me the ball, even with Trevor Simeon or Taysom Hill. And, and that's part of it, too. With the Chiefs, maybe you're playing deep into January and into February and in the Super Bowl and everybody's sitting home while their seasons are over, watching me play. It's a complicated process because it's money this year versus whatever he can make as a free agent. And the better he plays and the bigger the plays he makes and the more buzz he creates, more money as a free agent.
Right. So I think this sort of sets up a, a couple of questions, right? Like, A, if there were, say, let's call it a multi-year deal on the table, would that maybe be worth it for Beckham Jr. in order to get himself maybe a little more guaranteed money up front as opposed to just betting on himself and saying, listen, I'm going to go and I'm maybe going to get $3 million. Or I'm going to get whatever else I'm going to get right now to set myself up. Um, for the rest of this season for free agency there in March, where I kind of get to go through this process again, where a bunch of teams sort of want me. And, you know, they say, well, it'd be great to have you. And here's why, and here's all the money that we're going to give you. And then I think the other part of it is then, all right, well, where does that necessarily mean that he's going to be able to maximize his skills the most, right? Because again, I think you have to factor the quarterback in here, whether it's Sean Payton designing the plays or not. Right? Like I said before, Trevor Simeon, and Taysom Hill don't excite me as, you know, possibly somebody who's going to get me the ball, right? And I guess, you know, he did play with Eli Manning, and we can have debates on whether Eli Manning was really that great of a quarterback or not. And I think, you know, frankly, Beckham Jr. probably extended his career, Eli Manning's career, a couple years longer than it maybe should have been, um, given the way how well Beckham Jr. played those first few years that he had in the league. So I, I guess it's it's still, you know, how does he really want to weigh the fact that, okay, I can really get the ball versus, you know, maybe there's a team that wants to guarantee me a little bit more up front. Does, does that make sense? Oh, absolutely. And that's the other side of it, too. Is it just a one-year deal or does somebody want to secure his rights beyond 2022? If I'm Odo Beckham Jr., my preference is to go back to the market in 22 unless I get a significant guaranteed payday now with a team where I believe I'm going to be part of the future and they're going to be building around me. And, you know, maybe the Saints can do something on a multi-year deal and Sean Payton can say to OBJ, hey, you know what? Here's who I think our quarterback's going to be next year. Wink, wink, nod, nod. So there's a lot of variables that go into it. So the Chiefs are a team that we're going to continue to keep an eye on over the course of the remainder of this hour and beyond because I have reason to pay attention to the Chiefs. I've yet to confirm what I was told. We're not reporting it, but we're watching very carefully to see if the Chiefs are in play. There was a thought earlier this afternoon that the Saints were the team that was going to get Odell Beckham Jr. The Patriots are in on it. I don't know how serious Beckham is about playing for the Patriots. And I don't know, Miles, where he lands on the spectrum of Randy Moss, who took to the Patriot way perfectly for three years. It lasted three years, but it was it was a great run while he was there. Or wow. Chad Johnson, who was never able to accept and adopt and be himself in that environment. And I think with Chad Johnson, his inability to be that that – Chad with a lot of flair and personality that affected his his performance so OBJ's always been more of an individual can he subsume that quality can he become one of the I used to call them the Stepford Patriots I haven't called them that in a while but you know <laughs> basically the the robots that Bill Belichick wants being all about team, only team, no complaining, no excuses, no anything other than you do what you're told as part of a broader machine that is trying to achieve a greater goal. And we won't know until he's actually there if he even goes there. I would say this about Odell Beckham Jr. We didn't really hear him complaining about anything with the Browns until last week, right? So, I mean... I and all of those teammates that are now his ex-teammates have really called him kind of a model citizen, a model teammate. And they've said really good things about him. Young receivers have said, thank you for the way that you've helped me and, you know, helped shape my career um, as it has just started. So I, I don't know if he could or could not adapt to that. I think that as long as he's in a situation where he's getting targets and he's making plays, he's still going to be kind of happy. And I think Devontae Adams put it like this earlier today, right? It, it, it's sort of like, well, he got one target and had one catch for six yards in his last game with the Browns. It's, it's a little bit easy to just kind of exceed that on your ter in terms of a bar, right? For where the performance is right now. So I guess 
as long as a team gets him the ball at this point and lets him show off his receiving ability, I don't see him necessarily being a problem child, especially because at this point now, he's going to be able to pick his destination. So if you pick your destination and you still are a pain in the rear end, that's not going to be a good factor for you going into whatever your free agency is if you have it next March. Yeah, I mean, that is absolutely the right way to view it. He has to be a model citizen with his next team if he wants to lay the foundation to be embraced when he becomes a free agent, if he becomes a free agent in March of 2022. You mentioned the Packers. That's another team that's been linked to Odell Beckham. And you mentioned Devontae Adams. Let's hear from what he said earlier today, Devontae Adams, on the possibility of OBJ becoming a member of the GBP. I haven't um, been in a situation where two, you know, of the, of the league's, you know, premier guys, you know, obviously it's been a different situation with him over the past few years, but everybody knows what he's still about. So um, I don't think there's a whole lot of doubt as far as what he can do. So um, it'll be different, I'm sure, but it's, you know, I, I'm pretty secure in, in what I bring to this offense and this team. Um, and I know what his mindset is based off what he just came from. He'd be happy to deal with, you know, whatever at this point. I mean, he had one catch like six yards in his last game. So I can guarantee you we can get him more than that over here. So uh, as long as he's good with two catches, 12 yards, we should be straight. <laughs> That's funny. Uh, I, look, I, like the I, I wonder I wonder about the mixture of the personalities, OBJ and Aaron Rodgers. I just wonder. I, and I just wonder. <laughs> I wonder. I, don't you? Don't you wonder? I... I you know, you better you better go Aaron in there. Rodgers with anybody at this point, man. Based well, on the right, things exactly. That you've learned about him over the last week but, and but, a half. But if but if you're Odo Beckham Jr., you got to go in there and kiss the ring. Aaron Rodgers isn't going to be kissing any rings. He's the king in Green Bay, and 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 I wonder if that's a factor in this two miles after two and a half years of dealing with Baker Mayfield. And I frankly do think that Baker's got a little bit of the responsibility for the failure of OBJ to really work. And I said from the moment they traded for Odell. Cleveland isn't big enough for both of these personalities. Just as Baker was morphing into the new LeBron, here comes OBJ. At a time when OBJ was a much bigger deal, it's like, is this really going to work? Is this really going to work? So slow down my on point Baker is this. being LeBron. I, I mean, I know he, what no, the point you're yeah, You know yeah, what I'm saying. Slow, slow down rewind. Well, 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 rewind to January, February 2019. The vibe. I know. It was, I know. We're finally, we're finally, hey, the, the, we put the fire out on the river, baby. Let's go surfing. That was the attitude. All right. The fire out on the river. Let's go. Nobody's surfing on the Cuyahoga River, first of all. We're in Lake Erie. So if I, a really no, big boat goes be. by, you can catch uh, a wave. <laughs> hang 10. I'm just saying, like, I mean, I think the more apt comparison as a Clevelander would be Bernie Kosar, not LeBron James. LeBron James is, you know, LeBron James, like, was the sort of the basis of the downtown Cleveland economy for years and years and years because, you know, that's just the way things work down there. I mean, when LeBron James was there, everything was, you know, that East 4th Street was, you know, going up and everything. I, the point is, he's not as big as LeBron in the neighborhood will be. It's cause this, I'm this sorry, I'm sorry. But if he wins a Super Bowl, then yeah, but he's not. Like, let's right. let's pump the brakes a little bit, all right? But but my point is, how I'm much sorry. of his experience with Baker Mayfield will be a factor for Odell Beckham Jr.? Because he okay. had Johnny Milktoast as his quarterback in New York for the first six years of his career in Eli Manning. Eli Manning's not getting in a fight oh, with anybody, milk-toast. right? Right? Am I wrong? Now, look, look we're starting no. to see some personality oh, from FCC, him on TV. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Johnny <laughs> Double Bear Middle Finger now. What, yeah. a, what a change. What a transformation. But as a football player, Eli Manning was not a guy that had a, a lot of sound and fury. And all I'm saying is, as you're laying out the various factors, and hey, sometimes having choices is difficult because you know what? happens when you have choices at some point you got to pick a door you got three four five doors hey odell which one are you going to take and is it playing time uh how much am i going to get the football how much money am i going to make do they want to sign me for one year or do they want me to sign a three-year deal and is my quarterback any good and am i going to get along with my quarterback so i i think i just i'm just saying miles that has to be a factor somewhere yeah. in the analysis Given what he likely dealt with in Cleveland, where whether it was his fault, Baker's fault, 
everybody's fault, nobody's fault. It seems like those two didn't get along. So as I'm making my next decision, that experience is going to, I think, be something I'm at least curious about as it relates to the guy who's going to decide whether or not I get the football. Oh, yeah. I, and then I think that that makes totally good sense. I, I think that you have to factor in, you know, whether or not you're actually going to have chemistry with the quarterback of the team that you decide that you want to sign with. I think those things are extremely important. Look, if you're not a fit for the environment that you're in, you're probably not going to be successful. And I think that that's not just football, that's in life. You know, you could be in any job, any industry, and maybe you're just not the right fit for that organization. You're going to have a bad time. Like, I think that that's just the way life works. So, I mean, I, I feel like it's this sort of weird protracted free agency thing that you've got to go through in the middle of the season. And if you're not going to be a good fit for that locker room, then it's going to be a problem wherever you go, despite how much money you may be making. So I, I don't know how he's going to be able to sort of measure that or quantify that um, in terms of the way things are working right now. But yeah, I think that wherever Beckham Jr. goes, he's got to make sure he is a fit for not just that offense, but also that locker room, um, because otherwise it's just not going to end well. Hi, I'm Mike Tirico, and thanks for watching. Make sure to hit subscribe for the latest news and highlights from NBC Sports.